As I'm sitting down to do this video, there has just been uh, an earthquake in Japan, 7.6 magnitude. There is a tsunami. Please take a moment here in the beginning. Pray. Pray for these people. Send some good energy that way. It does matter. No matter what other people want to say, it does matter that you're sending good energy that way. Now, normally I would start off this video by saying Happy New Year. I guess Happy New Year. But again, that is occurring so we are clearly in a very different year, which for the most part, I think a lot of people are feeling a massive shift. We just ended this giant cycle. The 2023 was all about, you know, spiritual choices, uh, learning things like the more spiritually well you were, the clearer your vision. And so this could have come with a little bit of pain for some of you where you had to let a love partnership go, or you realize this isn't the career for me, or, you know, just really catching ourselves in some moments where we're allowing something to take our energy and it's, it's not worth the cost, right? So that could have been a big part of 2023. I bet a lot of you went through massive shifts and changes during the past year. As we come into 2024, this is a money year. This is about abundance and appreciating what you have. And maybe some, again, some life shifts continuing, but this is sort of the, the moment where you're kind of clearing away all the stuff that you realized that doesn't work for me. You're still in that place of uh, undoing that or, again, learning how to adapt, I want to say. And then you will start to build other things. You will start to manifest more opportunities. But remember, being in the earth school as a human, is all about learning lessons. So if you watch any kind of reading or any kind of spiritual video with the hope and, you know, uh, just this hope that people are going to tell you that everything's going to be fine now, it's smooth sailing, certain areas of your life, yes, of course, but there are other parts here that you are now learning about. So of course we have the angelic realm coming in here, trying to get us to open up and understand more about who we are, remembering more about who we are. We keep talking about this massive split that has been occurring for many years. It's really starting to become obvious now. And so there are going to be people who want to become more polarized. They want to slide into victimhood. They want to stick with their old narratives. They will double down on how they treat people or people will really... You know, when they're getting all these signs to leave a job or leave an industry, double down and do that even more, right? So there will be that. I think for, I would say about 75, 80% of you who are watching this right now, this is going to be sudden revelations and just like a clear moment of remembering about how we work as, uh, as energetic beings. I have a little, um, Ganesh here with me and he was falling over. So I had to, I had to hold him up. If you guys don't know, um, one of the first visions, really profound visions I ever had was Ganesh. So he's very important to me. <laughs> he's right here with me. So, you know, remembering who we are energetically and what you're going to find as a result of this is, and this isn't an, an intellectual thing. So you're going to see a lot of fake spiritual people out there. It's going to be cringy. You're going to know it. You're going to be like, I can't be around this person. I can't bring myself to listen to this person, so on and so forth, because, you know, they're going to, like I said, they're going to try to intellectualize this remembering when there really are no words for it. So things that you once cared deeply about, you don't. If something used to really get under your skin, it's of no consequence. It's of no matter to you. Like literally you're going to be in a space where you just like, I, that's not for me. That's not mine. That's not mine. And that includes any bit of darkness that is working through a person, a situation, or even a place, you know, that could occur as well. So you're going to find that a lot of the changes that you make over this coming year have to do with as we've been saying for many years, this just doesn't resonate with me anymore. I just don't want to be here anymore. This could also be the time that a lot of you are awakening to not holding yourselves back anymore, not um, 
you know, playing small for other people's comfort. You might even be waking up to how you have allowed yourself, one, to self-sabotage, but two, to hold yourself back, okay? Maybe someone was always wanting you to stick with them because they knew they weren't going anywhere in their life. And so you felt some sort of duty to sit there with them when you want to keep growing and creating. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to be uh, quite good, I think, for a lot of people. It has that potential for sure. But that nice outcome, it comes from the final exam. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you have to go through that and then there's this uplifting feeling after. And um, I remember last week, the video I posted, actually I posted two videos last week and they both were very, very love centric. This is also a time I, I feel that we're redefining what kind of love we want do not overcorrect because I mean, I'm seeing a lot of stuff on social media where it's like, oh, you just need, if you went with the person who's like super peaceful and all that, well, that's all well and good. But I, I think people are just, um, there, the potential there is to overcorrect and just go towards someone that you actually don't have feelings for <laughs> because you're not nervous around them. Like nervousness and anxiety, those are two different things. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're feeling the butterflies and all that, that's anxiety. That's usually some sort of old trait or even some old karmic pattern that you're repeating. Being kind of shy and nervous because you just you just adore somebody so much that you don't even have the words. That's cute. You know what I mean? Like that's something different. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. A lot of you are starting to go towards this isn't even just like, oh, it's the new year. Now I'm going to take care of myself. Um, you're going towards what that actually looks like. And that's mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, you're, you're not just accepting a surface level narrative anymore. You're diving deep. So this would be the time where a lot of excuses are going to go out the window, right? So if you're sitting there saying, but I eat healthy, I eat healthy, I eat healthy, right? Like that was always me. I eat healthy. I get, I get healthy things in here. And then I sat down and really started tracking my food. And I'm like, oh, dang, <laughs> Like, okay, like, you know, some of those, like, chia seeds have calories, okay? So, like, <laughs> just, just be aware, you know? So, just things like that, um, really, like, for, in my case, really watching just how much sugar I was taking in, and that stuff is sneaky. It sneaks in here and there, and I knew I wasn't, you know, really, you know, I, I worked out. I, I'm actually quite active, usually, but when I get busy, you know, I'm sitting at my desk, like most people. And I, I had to be real with myself and say, hey, like, what have I actually done this week? I need to get outside. I went and I walked around my hometown for over an hour, just rediscovering my hometown. I was born and raised here, but, you know, I haven't lived here since I was 18 years old. So just went around. Now that I'm older, I have an appreciation for the history, the older buildings, the older houses, that sort of thing. And it was very uplifting. So this is a time of really getting real and no longer putting energy into excuses. Not to be harsh, you know, it's like, get up and work out. Being tired is an excuse. I wouldn't listen to those people either, okay? Like, you know, some of you are going through hormonal shifts. Like, you know, have some, have some grace for yourself and some compassion for yourself. But you're going to start seeing everything through such a different lens. And I think it could be very shocking at first. So... Unfortunately, like I was saying at the top of this reading, it just maybe you're getting that clarity about a situation, a place, a job, a person, a relationship, and you go, you know what? That's held me back way more than I have ever admitted. And it's not this thing that you have to sort of think about it and then implement it. It just is so matter of fact. It's just... I don't want to say it's easy because there's going to be an energetic imprint. There's going to be something that sort of lingers there until you can clear that away. But it, there's just no question about how you need to proceed. Okay. Now, on the upside, this could be some of you, especially like if you're somebody who maybe, you know, check with an astrologer. I'm not, I haven't studied astrology. I know of it from being in this realm and we all get lumped into the same category. <laughs> so, so I've heard um, that we have just ended uh, a 15 year cycle 
I believe this has something to do with the transit of Pluto. And I'll tell you what. Okay, I love how all your astrologers are just like, no, here's what this could mean. And every year you've just been like, and don't forget, you know, you're doing this. And, this. and then when it's over, it's like, God, you, you were really struggling there, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. And I'll, I'll share another example here. 2008. I had one of the weirdest, it's still to this day, I say it was one of the weirdest things that has ever happened to me. And it was around career and relationships. I was in this company where um, people were making up lies. Like, literally, I'm like, do, 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 just come to work, do my thing. Like, dreaming about what could be, you know, next in my career. I'm just getting ready to make those moves. And then it just started crumbling. And all of a sudden, people thought, certain things about me and I don't even know where it came from. It was all lies and rumors and gossip and it just was relentless. And that went on for quite some time until I finally left that company and I started Angel Souls. But then it would come back to haunt me. It was still haunting me and it was in a way still haunting my career because people are like, yeah, well, she's duplicitous. And, you know, she's like, blah, blah, blah. And it's all based on these things that these people made up. It was an industry where I'm not going to lie to you. It's filled with nerds who they must be bored. They must be. I think they don't have anything else going on because I don't I literally mind my business over here. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I, I'm i glad I'm at a place now in my life where I can laugh about that because it was very painful to go through. But now that we've come out of that, I have just felt, it again, this feeling, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just very matter of fact. Like, I'm not doing that anymore. If people want to talk, they're in God's hands. God sees everything. God can handle that. And the highest good of everyone involved, I don't want anybody harmed. I just want them to wake up. And realize, you know, like, hey, you don't treat people like that or whatever. Whatever is appropriate, right? So that's the kind of thing that we're doing. We're leaving this stuff behind. But still, that blew my mind. I was like, 2008 was the weirdest year of my life. Like, <laughs> over here, Pluto is just, you know, doing his thing. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> those are the kinds of things, you know, and energies that are going to be shifting for us. But Really, there's going to be, um, you know, a new start in some way. There's going to be a shift in focus about what area of your life you want to work on, how people are coming together. Um, and if you, I just got a huge ringing in my ear, like a high pitch squeal. Hold on. I know I'm making it sound so magical. <laughs> when we start understanding more about energy frequencies and how that works, let me, let me just, since this is happening now, I will put in here, like, we're not putting these cute little stories around these things. We're going to actually understand why it's happening. Now, here's where it gets kind of cool, because I think there's going to be a lot of overlap with uh, science. And instead of, you know, scientists going, there's nothing magical about it. It's just this. Instead of presenting it that way, maybe going, huh, we just got scientific evidence for this thing that indigenous people have been talking about forever okay look at that they knew this before we even had a way to prove it so hopefully we take a nice little perspective so there's that part but as far as people coming back together again you might to me it just feels like an abundance of clarity like you see things for what they are you're seeing yourself you're not making up a story you're not putting so much effort into avoiding something that you could put that same effort into and actually have something accomplished. Does that make sense? Like you're not wasting energy that way anymore. Um, and a lot of you are probably going to go through a phase where you're wanting to cut a lot of stuff out of your life. So if you are some, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of a weird feeling here, but like if you're a collector of sorts, like I collect books, yes, I have Oracle decks, but that's mostly because people have sent them to me. Um, but you know, I have rare books and all of that. And not that I would necessarily get rid of them, but it has put my attention to my book, my book collection and had me asking, which one of these do I still want to hang on to? What do I want to get rid of? What, what part of this is, is it time to move along? Let somebody else enjoy it. You see what I'm saying? I think this next year, especially when it comes to overconsumption, um, people, you know, because for the longest time, it was like cute to go to Target and buy a bunch of stuff that you don't need. It was cute to go do a run on certain mugs out there. 
and spend $50 on them. It was cute. Everyone's like clamoring to get it. Now I think people are, you know, at least if they are on this nice track, they're going to go, you know what? I don't need it. It's clutter. It affects my energy field when I have that clutter. And it's putting this energy of lack out into the universe. You would think, no, I'm being abundant. I'm, I'm showing that I have all the money to spend on this. When you feel like you have to clamor and get a hold of something, it's out of a fear of missing it. And especially when you're getting several of them, it's because you're terrified you're not going to have it. When you walk right on by, especially if it's a material thing, and you're like, oh, I heard about that. I, I thought that was pretty cool, but you know you don't need it in your life. There you go. I think this is opening up a whole era where a lot of influencers are going to see a, a fall from grace <laughs> because, again, something is shifting here. It, it's We're not falling for it anymore. And I'm not saying like, like, let's say, you know, on that certain clock app, there is a way to sell things on there. So if I came across something that was, let's say, for my wellness or just something I really, really loved. I was curious about it. I tried it. I genuinely love it. Would I tell my audience about it and have a link to it? Yeah. I mean, come on. This is what we have to do. Marketing is still a thing. Affiliate marketing is still a thing, although I'm not a fan of that through experience. But you see what I'm getting at here. We're still in this material world. So it's not like, you know, just getting rid of all of your belongings. It's more of what does that actually do for me? Am I trying to fill a void? Am I trying to avoid something? Am I just trying to comfort myself? And, uh, you know, because when you order something online, isn't it fun when you get a package? It's like you got a little gift, right? So you feel good in opening that, so on and so forth. Now we can use this as an example in a lot of different areas, but let's go back to that energetic awareness. This is where we're going to start being more aware of our Merkaba. Uh, if you guys don't know, I am doing a class where I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one session with people, but you have to be ready for it. You can't just jump in and do it. No, you can't. I mean, you could try, but it's not going to work. Okay. So I have some other classes. I have angel mediumship classes. I have connecting with your angel classes. That's a little bit different. The connect with your angels, that's more like the starting point, just getting familiar with angels. And I'm even uh, helping people get in touch with the Akashic records get information from there. But again, that's not something that is going to be suitable for everybody. But if you want a live reading with me one-on-one -on -one, or one of these courses, you just email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. I am booking up this week actually because the holidays were happening. I booked uh, a few days in between Christmas and New Year's, but now I'm setting up the rest of January. So if you want that, let me know. If you want your 2024 overview and you just want to do a standard reading, still get a lot of information through those as well. Those you access at my website, angelsouls444.com. There's no time commitment on your part. You just go to the website, you choose how much time you want, and it'll go in 30 minute increments. So if you want a whole hour, hour and a half, you just, you know, put in that amount of time and there will be a submission form. You fill it out with your questions and then you're in the queue. And when it is your turn, there's a wait time, so pay attention to how it's delivered. Make sure you're comfortable with that. You know, all, all the things are right there and they are clear. So when people email me and say, that wasn't clear, I didn't see it, I know you're trying something, okay? Because <laughs> you, can't, you can't get the reading without seeing all of it. You feel me? Okay, so don't try it. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, you fill out the submission form, you're in the line. When it is your turn... I will make an MP3 for you. I'm doing the service. So I give you the service. It's delivered via MP3 to your email. There you go. You got it. Okay. So keep those things in mind. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one. I'm trying to, th this whole thing about, you know, be more aware of your Merkaba and, and, and the, the frequencies, the meridians, you know, how your body truly functions in the realm beyond here. And how that is filtering in. Again, the ego consciousness is going to come in and want to put all these interesting stories around it. And, you know, because it gives us a little tingle, doesn't it? It's fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Right? But in reality, you know, it's not really serving us. So again, it's getting real. 
it's taking everything that you've already learned, if you have learned your lessons and haven't avoided them, learning your lessons and now implementing them and having them serve you and serve your highest good, okay? So lots of changes coming up. You might find, like, I, I don't know how you guys are feeling, and I don't think this is just the beginning of the year, but I'm like, I want to hop on my taxes and get them done. I want to declutter my home. If you're not a kind hearted person who is reasonable and whatever, I don't have time for you. Point blank period. I don't have time for you. Right. And it's not coming from any sense of urgency or overwhelm or hatred or jadedness. It's nothing of the sort. It's just a fact that's done. That's done. And we're not doing that. Maybe the taxes are a little bit like, let me just get that while I'm fresh. Okay. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to wait till April and be like, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> right. That part. Yeah. But I hope you can and see what I'm getting at here. And I, you're going to find that there's this renewed sense of peace, despite what's going on in the world, which is interesting because now instead of seeing events and going, oh my gosh, well, we know the earthquake in Japan, we've been saying for years, the earth is shit from a spiritual perspective. Okay. Um, the earth has been shifting and changing. And what's the story some people want to put around that? Gaia is angry with us and Gaia is punishing us. I understand that, you know, we all have been on a spiritual path and there are certain times on our spiritual path that we do go into that kind of thinking or even like magical thinking, but like that's trying to put a story around, um, maybe what's just kind of naturally occurring for the earth and her evolution. But we got to be careful with that. And this is something I've had to learn over these many years as well. When we say stuff like that, it's almost implying that like people who had horrible things happen to them deserved it, right? They, that's, that's my big problem with a lot of the law of attraction stuff out there, especially when it's super shallow and it doesn't really address all aspects of your energetic connection to things then what? The people who are victims of atrocities, like they brought it on themselves? Like, I, I, no, the meth ain't meth and honey. <laughs> and we're not listening anymore. I also think that, uh, actually, I was just on social media this morning and uh, I, what was it? I think it was YouTube Shorts and then the Clock app as well. And it is fascinating to me. You know, readers are not, card readers. Card readers are not even reading the cards anymore. They're just setting up a camera, putting music on and laying cards down and saying, contact me for a reading. And then they're just not even reading anymore. So that people are going to, it's not so that we're paranoid or suspicious and then overcorrecting and trying to see something wrong with everything everybody is doing. But when you look at that, maybe keep swiping. Like people aren't even offering anything for free anymore, right? So, you know, I sit down usually for about a half hour each week. I give a message, an angelic message. These are messages that start coming through, you know, before I even hit record. I get ready. I sit down. I do it. I edit it and I put it out there. Whether you get a service with me or not, you still have this, right? But people are now, I don't know, it's weird. It's like more and more people are trying to get away with stuff and woof, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. And it's almost um, the evolution I think a lot of people have gone through is such that people who have not gone through that same evolutionary path, they used to be like big, scary monsters to us. And now they're like a little mosquito bite. And we're like, Boop. <laughs> whatever, or, you know, smacking it before it can get us. So you're not having the same emotional reaction and you're certainly not as afraid. Now that is not encouraging you to not be discerning. We don't want to be stupid about this, but you know, I mean, it, the people are not, the same games are not going to work anymore. They're just not going to work anymore. So what do you need to be doing? Here are some things, of course, meditating, giving yourself, meditating, praying, doing your spiritual wellness practices. Okay. Being open to new perspectives. Even if you don't get a reading with me, make sure you if, go to somebody who is about spiritual wellness, not just answering your questions on the spot, not just doing shallow readings, but maybe answering your questions and helping you understand what's going on in your soul contract. And I don't know if I've ever made this clear in the over 10 years I've been doing this professionally. 
angelic readings are really soul contract readings because they're helping you with that. So when you come with a question, be this happens with a lot of clients, be prepared for me to set that question aside, see what that is bringing up and going into the soul's contract and, and working on where you are at this time with that and then bringing it up to the surface and answering the surface level question. There's going to be a lot of people reuniting. Some of it might be because, okay, there's been a block for 15 years and now that block is lifted and whatever. That could be some of it. Uh, in other cases, some of it's coming around so that you can go, oh, yeah, I'm definitely not the same person. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> I don't. I don't need it, right? So you just never know. Just be prepared. You know, there could be some people, you know, just figuring things out. Doesn't necessarily have to mean it's going to be bad or, you know, scary or anything like that. Be discerning. Protect yourself. But we don't want to encourage paranoia either. Be working on your physical health. Again, not just because it's the new year. We have a different number vibration for this year. So if you want to feel good in your body doesn't mean that the scale has to say a certain number. I know, like I've, I've always, I've never had a thin day in my life. I've, oh, yeah, I was a fat baby, fat kid, fat teenager, fat adult. Like it's been a thing for me. <laughs> so I don't work towards a number on the scale. When I really start going, okay, I need a different type of workout because I can't get off the couch. Or I, <laughs> I try to get off the couch, but I hurt myself. Okay, I hurt myself lying in bed one time. That happened. It's a true story. I really, I seriously hurt myself. I, <laughs> I'm like, what? Now you got to tell the story. Well, I was, um, I was lying in bed and I went to turn over. I flopped like a fish in my sleep. Um, I've woken myself up from flopping around. Um, I don't just turn over lightly. I have to like jump up and flop over, I guess. I don't know. But, um, or maybe I'm dreaming and I just didn't realize I was doing it. But anyway, um, <laughs> the top part of me flopped and the bottom half didn't follow. And I had hurt myself. I, oh, my stuff. I thought I needed an, ambu an ambulance. I, I did. I thought, oh, no. Like, I don't know what I just did, but it's not good. I think I moved organs. I think something just gave up on me. I think <laughs> I may not live through this. It was bad. It was bad, people. Okay, it was. So, yeah, you know, when, I, <laughs> when I'm when i in that space, you know, I'm like, okay, I I need to strengthen my core. I need to, you know, to help my back. Or if I realize I went up a flight of stairs and I was out of breath and for a little too long, get up off the couch and go for a walk or go back up and down those steps if they're in your house. Now I have steps in my house. Did I tell you this? I have steps in my house now. So yeah, <laughs> so, you know, just, it's about, you know, how you feel. That's the important part and nourishing so that you're not, your senses are not dulled. Yes. So processed foods will dull your senses. Um, you know, fast food, things like that. Anything with chemicals in it. Now you don't need to be one of these crazy people out there. Sorry, but, um, where you're just, you're, you're more worried about doing things very precisely and correctly. You don't want to go so far that your clean eating is actually working against you, whether you're not getting proper nutrients or, whatever. Okay. So, or, you know, there, there's psychological things and effects from doing that as well. And I'm even hearing now they're saying most people do stuff like that so that they can feel superior to others. Uh, it's messy. Humans are messy. We got messy ways. Um, so if that doesn't work for you, okay, that doesn't mean that you can't have French fries every once in a while. Okay. Just, you see what I'm saying? Like mitigate this a little bit, but overall taking care that you're not allowing situations to drag you in. If someone is causing drama, power struggles, a boss is on your case, you know, maybe the answer isn't to, I mean, for some of you, you will be changing your careers, but maybe for you, some of you others, it's not a case of, I need to change my job. What's likely is that that boss has been put there to teach you how to do something. Okay. And it's a spiritual lesson. Now I had a lot of like, I gotta say abusive. There's no other word for it. I don't care if people think I'm being hyperbolic. I'd like to see you go through that. 
and come out. You wouldn't be doing half as well as I'm doing right now. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> but um, the last boss I had in the last corporation I worked at was a monster. Okay. This person, not okay. Just not okay. Um, loved abusing people. Just loved it. Got such a charge out of feeling powerful because they know that they don't have any real power. So they have to bully people so they feel like they're on top or something. I don't know. But, and I've told this story before, when that person, I put up with a lot from that person and I was just like, I, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of panicking and desperate. And so I was like going to everybody being like, anybody else have a job? I, I, I kind of don't want to be without a paycheck and health insurance, but anybody else have a job? Please, please, please. And that wasn't the lesson. That wasn't the lesson. The lesson was to stand up for myself and standing up for myself with this person uh, given that I don't, I don't actually think she's a real human. I, you know, I'm not really one to go around saying like, yeah, whatever. I don't know what the heck was animating that, that being or whatever. I don't know. But when you got no compassion, you've got like no empathy. Oof. Oof. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the words are. Anyway, me standing up to that person. I had tried that before when, you know, called me into a meeting and accused me of things I didn't do. Actually, other people were doing. I tried to scapegoat me. I tried to stand up for myself. It didn't work. What was the lesson? To not be around that person at all. Now, in this case, it was a matter of I needed to be pushed more towards my purpose. But for you, maybe that job is your purpose. And you, it's a little bit opposite of the example I'm giving here where you are supposed to stand up to that person and learn how to do that and do it gracefully and and or learning to shut your energy off so they can't even get in. Okay. You see what I'm saying? It's going to be different for everybody. That's why personal readings are, you know, on offer. <laughs> if you want to do that, angelsouls444.com or email for live sessions, angelsouls444 at gmail.com in case you missed it previously in the video. So these are the kinds of things. It's just, you know, you're going to start getting maybe solutions or maybe direction. You're getting direction. You're getting that deeper understanding. A little bit more of you is waking up if you have been, uh, you know, not avoiding your lessons, but going through them. Uh, by the way, in the past 15 years, that's this whole thing with that, that boss who, you know, but, oh, and the triggering phrase, <laughs> the thing that finally made everything stop with that boss, uh, was she, she said that she was going to throw my ass on the floor and I was going to sit there until she needed me. And I kid you not, this woman has a cackle. Okay. I, that's not a joke. She literally cackles and she cackled and walked away. And I just sat there and I remember the feeling of, I can't take anymore and just how sick to my stomach I was. And then I'm like, this is why she does this. It makes her feel powerful that she ha she's in charge of someone's emotional self. And I thought, and my mental wellness as well. And I was like, well, she ain't nobody. Why am I, why am I, why am I giving her all this power? Uh, -uh, uh, uh, So I went off and started Angel Souls. I was like 35, 36, started my own business. And I've been in business for myself ever since then. This is that kind of time for some of you. Okay. So I'm, I'm offering that as an example, because I don't know it's going to be pleasant for all of you. Um, or like I keep saying, I don't want this. I don't want all of you to take this as like, this is this collective reading is that specific message is for everybody. Some of you are learning to become stronger through a difficult dynamic where people are not always kind and respectful. Okay. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much. But lucky for us, I do this once a week. If you like seeing this content, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following me. That way you know when I'm popping some something up here. And you can always go back to the entire library I have on YouTube, there are 10 years worth of content. I don't even know, several thousand videos I have up. It's all there. And you could treat everything like it's timeless because whatever, and I really believe this, whatever you end up getting attracted to, if you go back and look at that video library, there's a message in there somewhere for you. Even if, like if it's one of those times that I used to put dates on it, like let's say you go back and look at something from like three years ago. And you start thinking about what happened to you three years ago and going, okay, that is a good way to gauge what you're coming out of. Like if you go back to the library of videos I have on my YouTube channel, one of them speaks to you. It's either, if there's no data on it, it's going to spark 
some realization, or if there is a date, you think back on that time and that is the thing that you are currently coming through. Okay, so use that as a tool, use that as a good exercise. Leave your comments down below, uh, especially if you want to know certain things about um, our human <laughs> development, I guess. Uh, and that could be something that I tune into and ask about so we can deliver that message next week. All right. I love you all so much. Happy New Year. Think of the people in Japan. Send that good energy around. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>